Okay. All right, we'll call this meeting to order. My name is uh, Chris Lynch, school board member. Um, so just a couple of housekeeping items. I'd like to get the intro. So first, thank you for coming. We're very excited about uh, having a work session and uh, being able to be a little less formal than a school board meeting, right? There's lots of things that school board meeting. I do need to let you know from a housekeeping standpoint, this is supposed to be meeting the school board, so we are following Iowa open meetings laws. So this has been posted. That we're also being taped over here, and uh, there'll be minutes and all that good stuff. So it, it is public record. So just so you know that if you're being taped, people like to like to tell people that. So don't I wouldn't worry about it other than that. But it's really just an FYI. Um, with that, I propose we go around the table and just do uh, a round of introductions, and then maybe we can talk to you, uh, talk to you if you want to start, Chris. Or... Okay, I'm Chris Liebig. I have a uh, daughter at City High. I recognize some of you, uh, and I'm a school board member. I'm Kim Colvin. I'm the board recording secretary. Kings of Bachelor, director of equity. Eric Schultz, I'm principal of West High. Matt Degner, assistant superintendent. I have some of you guys from Southeast. Liz Vie, I'm from City High. I'm Addie, I'm from City High. I'm Victor, I'm from City High. I'm Esty, I'm from City. I'm Lori Rodland, school board member, and my kids attend West High and Little Center. Uh, Phil Henry, school board member, and my daughter attends Alcoa. Mm -hmm. I'm Darren Buda and I go to West Bay. I'm Michelle Hamad and I go to West High. I'm Lejane Hamad and I go to West. I'm Jane Hamad and I go to West. I'm Jane Mary and I go to West. Natasha Stillers, Asian Parks, I go to City High. Brian Kirschling, I have one uh, son at Southeast and the daughter at Shane. I'm Chris, but I'll finish with I have a, a senior at West and my daughter's at UNI, a sophomore. She went, she went to West as well. so. Well, great. Thank you for coming. I mean, the good news tonight, I think we have a very pretty simple agenda. We kept it pretty broad. Students against hate and discrimination, so we'll get into that. And we really just want to engage uh, with you. And um, I think it's pretty open where we want to take it, where you want to take it. I kind of view this as, as your meeting. It's your meeting with us. Um, but perhaps a couple simple questions. Um, we certainly had a list of demands, right? I think it was November. So it might be just, how's it going? And maybe a secondary question, how's it going versus the list of demands? And, and I'll just say, too, we get it if it's evolved since then, but I really want to get a feel for how do you think it's going? Or, you know, have we met your needs? Has administrative transportation met your needs? That's what I'd like to hear about. I don't know if you want to flip a coin on city versus west, but does it matter? Who wants to go first? I guess we'll go first. Okay. As far as the demands being met, um, immediate demands have been pretty good. Um, let's see what's, um, so we're obviously taking action right now, and um, there's been a lot of um, push towards uh, creating a program towards educating students of their rights in school, um, which is exciting. I think that's going to be one of the things that we talk about here today. And um, we were still. Working on, yeah, we're still, okay. we're still working on the workshop. We started working with Kingsley on that, and so that's going so far. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, <coughs> we haven't had the pep assembly we asked for a while um, back. Also, I think we need to. I think we need to um, furthermore like push on the topic of um, teaching our teachers and. Uh, teachers and administrators to enact and provide a procedure when an incident has occurred because since then certain incidents have occurred and I don't like that paper you talked about we didn't that didn't happen um yeah um there was, an, more yeah, there was an incident with one of our um my sister that attends that was someone said something to her um nothing much happened since then I mean she talked to the dean and then the dean talked to um, the individual who said something to her. Um, and then that, like, nothing much happened. She didn't get any, like, um, paper she was supposed to file or something like that. She was. She didn't tell me about any of that. She just went to the dean and then told. And the dean was like, I'll just talk to the person. And nothing else happened after that. So I wasn't sure where to go from there. Um, and then for the sustained change, um, we're still, we're, we kind of started working on the class, the ethics class that was already, we would talk to Shot and Mr. Yes, Mr. Shot and two Mr. teachers that are at West about the class, and that's all that's happened with the class so far. And, 
Just so city, since you're here, you've been in contact with Elizabeth Brooke. Mm -hmm. and I know she's like helping, you know, um, facilitate some of your group work. I just haven't had the chance to meet with you. I think that I was going to be with you last in December, and um, I missed that meeting for whatever reason. And so um, I think I shot her bring you back to, to meet again. So hopefully we'll meet soon. So you guys imagine this is more of like a mini conference or where there's a couple different for the uh, March, for the, so the workshop, is it more like <coughs> multiple workshops in one month? Okay. Yeah, so what we envisioned was, it'd be a school-wide thing, but we'd break it down by period. And grade, grade, two, like, like, grade, 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 <coughs> seniors, so juniors, sophomores, freshmen. We allot a certain space for each grade to go, um, and ha just have like these student-led workshops, and the, like the, I guess you could say, like, the curriculum of the program would probably be, what we came up with was awareness, prevention, and support. And well, our apps, apps, yeah, mm -hmm. or ask if you want to split, whatever, <laughs> <laughs> whatever is most, we'll stick in your head. Um, so awareness would be focused on what's been happening at West. So the piece where we mm -hmm. make it relevant to the student body, and yeah. make them understand why we're doing this in the first place. Um, another part of awareness would be um, how to go about finding filing a complaint. So just the education piece and the which is like us part. learning about our rights. Yeah. So the last part would be know your rights. Then the second piece of that would be prevention, which is having open conversations. So if people share experiences or just share knowledge with each other. Um, and then we 
um, give examples of how to use your voice in school in a positive way and how to uh, communicate effectively with staff when that when these things occur um, and then it'd be kind of like geared it's geared mostly towards the students but teachers are more than welcome to come to learn about these things because that'll be helpful to know the students point of view and then the last part of it would be support um, so we talk about in that part of it we talk about how to support each other um, and define what support is for students and students and staff um, and the teachers would um, need to be the facilitators of the conversations Oh, like teach teachers yeah, how to yeah, facilitate conversations. Right. I was like, what? We were taught. We were, I was just talking <coughs> about that. Like, um, teachers have a lot of like these racial bias or whatever bias um, like courses they have to go to. And um, some teachers like we assume like would only like you've heard something, but a few teachers like they go to just like get it done or whatever. And so I feel like um, and they learn it from other adults. And I feel like if us as the students were to teach the teachers. Um, I don't know, I feel like it would give it more power, like more volume behind what we're trying to say, and um, that was just an idea. So they see it as like more than just like training, they see it yeah, as, like as our, yeah. our, yeah. our, yeah. our students like students how to yeah. Yeah. So then the last couple parts of support would be um, what are ways you can, so we branch out at the end towards the community and figure out what are ways you can impact the community and um, what are ways you can support someone who's been impacted by um, open discrimination. So that part would be allyship. And um, it's also, support also for us would mean uh, supporting people who cause the harm, and actually educating them and actually making sure it doesn't happen again. Yeah, when we support just for the, um, for the victim or whatever, but if we support for people who are like closed-minded and not understanding like the power or the so and then one of the like we didn't we we're trying to figure out ways to not make this just like a lecture type yeah. format. Like we want it to be really like workshop oriented, like activities. Like, like it'll sound fun rather than just sound a little bit like sit and talk and you tell them what's right and wrong. Because like, me as a student, I wouldn't even want to go to that. You know, like I want to make it like like we involve each other and involve the students and. No, sorry. I just didn't um, see much in splitting into grades, and then you think within each grade you'd split into smaller groups, parts followed uh, by last name, or um, or just be one big grade. Well, we were freshmen. thinking like we'll have like first and second period be freshmen, and then like sixth, seventh be sophomores, juniors be fifth, and then seniors would be like third. Period. And didn't we want to split it through like activities as well? Yeah, like so have different things going on. But like, like, organizationally, it'd be best to do it by last name or yeah. something. Yeah, yeah. Like, make it small. I think you get more of it. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we can, we can get into that, but just like the, a general outline. Mm -hmm. yeah. We want to do it a couple periods out of the day. And these workshops would be led by students. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we just need students who are willing to learn lead. about it and lead it. Should be too hard for me. I don't know if you all are familiar with this, but um, the University of Iowa used to have an annual cultural diversity festival. Mm -hmm. And I think doing something like that at the high school level would be really beneficial to just the student body as a whole. So you should do that at some of the elementary schools. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I thought you could talk to your um, family resource person at West High. Is that's who plans it at the elementary schools? What's the family resource person? Um, <laughs> is there a family resource person at yeah. West High? Oh, she was. Oh, or advocate? Yeah, yeah. yeah. not in that same role that they are in there. Okay. Okay, so I don't know who would do that, then you would have to probably... I mean, we have a diversity center in that site, like, you know, runs now. I don't know if that's different than you're talking about something different. There's another cultural nights. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the international between us. Okay. <coughs> so, um, we've given our part. Now I want to hear what, I don't know, if you guys think. Sounds awesome to me. But I'm simple. <laughs> well, what do you need from us? So we just said all these things we're going to do. What do you need from us? What do you need from administration? <laughs> well, funding. We're <laughs> 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 funding and. How much yes. funding? 
All right, and if it's to be determined, that's okay. We can take we can take fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so for the board, well, maybe it's administration, but okay, funding that makes sense. And you'll send us something, or what we can talk about. I don't know how like the assembly thing would work, but um, would we need permission from you like for like us to hold an assembly? You or don't. Users? You don't need. You certainly don't need our approval. We can help push to make sure it happens. Yeah. Don't we need to talk to you about like the whole class thing too? Like, aren't you guys the heads of like new classes in the new? I appreciate y'all making this whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> So that's what maybe. I think it depends. It yeah, depends. I think that's an administrative thing that they have to go through some process of for the class to be approved for high school credit. Mm -hmm. So there's some pieces there about what that looks like. But I think you guys are talking to the right people. We're talking to Mr. Shutt and Mr. Gross yeah. about some of that. But also what, what that ethnic studies class will look like. It's a high school will be important because they have to get it approved. Am I making this up? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm right no, you're right. Okay. 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 I know Kingsley's worked with you guys a little bit about it. Do you know that's why I think you've probably explored the workshop idea for some more immediate uh, reaction to that. And I think that in the long term thing, you know, with the class, you know, you get into all the administrative red tape stuff, right? We do a program of studies and graduation requirements and some of those things. So I think that's what Director Deloach is referencing that we would just want to work through those pieces, you know, to have that as a long-term sustained change, if that's what the board would approve and move forward with, because they approve our program of studies that's already presented for the year, but there's still work that has to be done prior to that, right? So those conversations you're having with your teachers and, and some of that legwork on what that class would look like, what makes up that class, when could we get it incorporated in there, I think those are all the things we need to be talking about now to do so that we can be positioned well, well to incorporate that when ready or... Uh, if ready. So the workshop thing, I think, is something that, as you guys continue to look at it, it's for something that can happen a lot faster, that you would see some of those conversations you want to have uh, take on a lot sooner. You all have lots of community support for that workshop because that, believe it or not, that was kind of out here in the community already amongst a couple of uh, folks that I've been working with as well, um, wanting to talk more about intersectionality and how it impacts students. And so that, that, some of that groundwork is laid. So did you know that there are tons of UI folks and community folks from human rights coordinator, et cetera, that are extremely interested in how do we get something like that going? So you have the support. So Matt, on these three, on these three so can you help us consolidate if there's a funding request? What do you mean consolidate? Um, so is, if you kind of put it to a page of what it would look like to do a class like that. Yeah, I think that's what we would. Now, if there's a recommendation on the last, yeah. then what's the, you know, is it the same city or what's the? Yeah, I mean, again, depending on if we're talking graduation requirements, then that would probably affect everybody. So then we talk about if everybody was going to need to take that class, you know, what would that ask be? And we can certainly run some numbers and, and get that in front of you guys so you know what we'd be well, signing on for. We want to be, I want to hear from, so we just heard there may be a funding request. All I'm saying, if there's a funding request from the city, maybe you could put it together and help us understand it. Sure, yep. We can I'm not asking you to go, right? I'm just replaying what we heard. Yep. And then is there a barrier to the assembly? I'm looking at you, I know Greg's here, <laughs> but is there? So I think the only thing with the assembly, I would just, I, I guess for me, I always want to know what do we want to accomplish, right? And what's the goal? And so then if we talk about the goals, then we can talk about the best way to achieve those goals. I think there's some, nerves about what an assembly would potentially look like and would it achieve those goals that you want to achieve. So I don't think anybody's against an assembly, but I think we'd want to know, is the assembly the best way to achieve achieve those things you want to do? So initially, I think that was the reaction to trying to do something in a smaller group format to understand about how you do a complaint, how you do some of those things better probably received in a smaller group. But um, so I don't think we're fundamentally opposed to any type of assembly. It's just you know, what do we want to do and what's the takeaway from leaving there and is that then the best way to do it, so. Yeah, I think that the, oh, go ahead. Now my question was going to be, you know, what did they do, what are they doing for Black History Month, what did they do for MLK Day, because those would have been great opportunities to have that assembly if a, a keynote speaker or something was coming in and specifically addressing that, you know, you know assembly, but can very easily be about bringing that back. There's plenty of community folks, you know, I, I even went to one of the schools, but they could come in and specifically maybe talk about that, and, and you can also address the, the need as a reminder of what the
students' rights and responsibilities, et cetera. Well, you know, I don't know. Yeah, one opportunity maybe if, if we continue to move forward with this workshop idea, you know, is there a way to kick off that experience, you know, with that assembly type format to say, okay, this is what we're about today, this is what we're doing. Um, you know, I, I want to give Greg a chance to respond if he has any thoughts too, but that would be my sense there, you know, that, okay, we gather everybody together, state the purpose, you know, and then you can break into either different workshops or something like that. I'm not sure what that format would take, but I, at least that's what I'm kind of thinking about as I hear you say that. Yes, yeah, so there's two things. One, your question around MLK and Black History Month, we're currently compiling all that information for principals. It's something that I think was sent out um, a couple of weeks ago to kind of get that information. I think it's been something that the board has wanted the last two years I've been here, so that was going to come down the um, um, down to the board meeting, not this board meeting, but probably the next board meeting, just to get that information. And then as far as the assembly piece, I think as well, I think some of your comments were, was about, you know, whether or not people wanted to get to sit and get or actually be interactive. And so I think that, you know, it, there was a component of the assembly that I think we talked about as far as, you know, being in that room, um, having some type of discussion, kind of what you were just talking about, Matt, getting together for a brief moment and then splitting up. I mean, even as we talked about, you know, having a, the different periods and having different folks in relation to different periods, I think was discussed. And so, um, again, that wasn't discussed at City High, um, but it was discussed at West. And so, um, there's some there's some things that we can do to make sure that it's getting the effect of you know notifying um, individuals. I think that you mentioned um, earlier, as far as you know, getting that kind of hey, this is important. These are the reason why we're doing it. Um, but then also kind of incorporating the the rest of the student led piece. I think that. Um MLK Day and like that, like Black History Month should be like a separate thing, though, because I feel like if we do this, people will associate it with like learning about Black people, or just this is about Black history, because this is a completely different thing and it's super broad and like open to different things. And I feel like we definitely need to focus more on like learning more about MLK Day, like on MLK and doing more, but like that should be a separate piece because we're not just focusing on the history of Black people. We're not just focusing on MLK. We're focusing on what we can do or what we need to do to. Fix everything that's going on right now, or make it better. So I think it is important to separate. Um, yeah. uh, I think maybe we put the assembly with a workshop at the beginning. Yeah. yeah. All these things, there's never a right answer. You just decide what's best. You know what I mean? That's why we're looking. You know, for getting really. My my, we need to be in your needs. So if you think that you know it's a, it's a way to go, then I think we should support that. And do you do you have? Um, I know you talked to Mr. Shrek and Mr. Gross, but do you have other you to say um, teacher allies, or have you approached teacher allies who are um, willing to put forth? You know, they're spread they're spread thin, but willing to put forth the effort. It sounds like you guys are doing an awful lot. Um, of impressive work, and um, many hands make the make the load a lot lighter. So, and sometimes people who've been there, done that, or who have maybe different channels to work, that um, you know, a different perspective, you know, might might make it an easier way. I'm just curious if you have those types of conversations or invitations to other teachers, because I think there's I think you'll find there's a lot of adults that have <coughs> similar concerns and mindset. I think we have a list of teachers that work, oh. I'm sure. And like in talks of like the class, I would say um, when we were talking to Brunson, uh, they said uh, it would be kind of hard to find like specialized teachers for the class mm -hmm. because um, they had an instance where they, there was a class that dealt with, um, I don't know what it dealt with, but um, so the, yeah, current events class, and so then the teacher who like specialized in that class left. And so there wasn't a teacher who was interested in like teaching about current events or wasn't like as involved. And so then you know like it'd be hard to find a teacher because they suggested like an English teacher, but then they also like to learn about like the history and the art and the reading and all the culture of like minorities and stuff. But there's also the social social studies aspect of it where you learn about like I don't know like. Like uh, the law and like and um like if you look into other slavery, to, yeah, if you wanted to add like, the effects and everything. So it would be hard for that. But um we definitely have some teachers who have like come up to us and told she has a list I think. <coughs> we have uh we have Madame Jewel um at West High and Mr. Connors is 
Mr. Connor. And then there's Carmen, Ms., uh, and then McGrain, and Ms. Head, and Ms. Ellison. So those, they're also on the Cultural Competency Committee. Sure. So that's what they, that's what Madam Jewell told us. And then there's also, gross on this list too. Um, Street Barn House, Johnson, Johnson. and Jewell and Dr. Schultz and Gross, they're all on the Implicit Bias Committee. But they've also stated that they'd be like behind helping us out. So, I mean, it's no secret that students have their favorite teachers. Students have teachers who are super popular all yeah. the time, year in and year out. It would be great to get somebody within your buildings to help spearhead. I mean, if it's having an assembly, it's one thing for, for you to get up there, you know, maybe nervous, and it would be another thing to also have somebody, in, you know, be able to help coordinate everything. I mean, you guys are doing a heavy lift. You're doing a really heavy lift, and I just think that it might be nice to have somebody help um, help with that. And, and if it's a, a popular, you know, teacher of the year, <coughs> favorite teacher every year type person, to spearhead that, it could maybe navigate the waters a little easier. Shut's pretty cool. Shut's pretty cool. Shut's pretty cool. He's going to liberty now. Uh, is he? Is he? So, I, I'm wondering though, could we give them funding for a club so that uh, so that they have a sponsor that uh, somebody who uh, you know has is a little more uh, incorporated. Uh, it's not just the teachers giving up their time, but it's actually. A group that has some funding. Yeah, so I look to the students if that's the request. Yeah, absolutely, we could. I mean, like, like Sada. Yeah, I mean, like robotics club has a coach. You yeah. know, um, the math team has a coach. You know, um, I mean, there's all kinds of clubs that are student senate has a, a faculty person, and these people are are, are paid uh, a, an additional stipend to do this work. So. And I understand that angle, but I think by making it a club, it would forego the class requirements, and a lot of people just would opt not to do that, which is, I don't think that is what we would like. Well, it, and I, I don't mean, um, I, I mean like a, a sponsor to, to help you organize yes. your oh, efforts. Sure. It's not that, it's not not that it would be <coughs> replacing all the things you're trying to do, but they would just help you facilitate this, just like, uh, math coach facilitates getting a team to a competition. You know, they would be facilitating you with the things you want to accomplish. So, so, so I, I just want to replay Kim to the notes, right? So the requests were, one, funding. We talked some options, Matt's gonna help put that together, get West point of view, city point of view. Two was an assembly. I think you talked about maybe linking it with the, um, Workshop. workshop. I don't know if there's anything we need to do to help. We we'll need funding for that too. And that can come up through the funding. <laughs> I don't know if there's anything else we need to do there to help. It sound, and then the third thing was the class, which it sounds like you got the right people involved early. I think Latasha summed, summed it up really well. We may need to approve it in the end or something, but we need to get the experts involved before it gets to us. Can, can, can we hear a little bit from our administrators about how does that happen, you know, if there were going to be a new class incorporated? I mean, sure. one of the questions we sort of talked about a little bit earlier, um, you know, if you're talking about a one trimester class, it seems like the easiest time to do that is the, the problem. I don't, I, it seems like you wouldn't want it to come too late in the K-12 cycle if it's going to have the effects that, you know, that you would want. So you want it's not something you take when you're a senior, right? Um, and we, I even sort of, I wondered whether junior high might be the moment. But tell me, just how does it even start to happen? Sure. So if we left here with the charge to, you know, go create a class that was a requirement for graduation or a requirement in junior high, we'd go back and we'd try to do some research on, you know, other comparable models. We'd bring you an example back of a course description, you know, a requirement of when students would take it, the length of time. And then I kind of see the cost in the class together, Chris, that we present both those hand in hand and say, here's the, here's the expense of doing this. It's going to take this much additional staffing to work an indoor schedule. Um, I think part of what you're talking about age-wise, we'd probably try to balance 
you know, flexibility in student schedule, interest, yeah. timing of when we think it would be most impactful, you know, the content that's going to be in that class, you know, some of those things. I couldn't say right now where I think it fits best, but I think we rely on these guys for some feedback. We talk to our teachers and say where would it make sense in a, in a sequence of events for uh, kids to take it and, and bring it back a couple proposals to look at. But it could be top down, but we're, it sounds like we're working on a late model right now, right? Working on I just think, I don't know we're all talking about the same thing. Okay. I mean, if you're talking about a required class that every student has to take, that's very different than if you just create an elective class right. that, right. you know, people elect to take or maybe they are told to take it because they need it, you know. Mm -hmm. But because, I mean, I'm, I feel like I'm probably an expert on a couple things and one of them is the junior high curriculum mm -hmm. and the space within that, you know. Mm -hmm. and it's, Pretty much the high school curriculum too. It'd be very hard to make it you know, out of whole cloth a new requirement mm -hmm. that everyone would have to because it whatever you put in pushes something. Out, you know, so I just don't want to say, oh yeah, we're all on behind the required course because you know we're right now we have a minor change in how we're doing science, for example, but that could have major implications to our enrollments in. Of performing music and foreign language and you know things down the road just because of you know how we do it. So there are there's a lot of unintended consequences that definitely come into play as we do this. But as far as piloting a class like one trimester elective class, yeah, that's something we can get behind and you know take. The thing is, though, if you make it an elective, the people who aren't educated won't take it. You know, like if you make it an option, like you people who don't want, like that's what happened last year, two years yeah, ago. Yeah, so like um, we before, I guess it was before so last year, yeah. So we had like um, world religions, and then we had like mm -hmm. North, and Nina, and, and, and like had all those different classes. And then like I have friends who, when you ask them about Judaism or any other religion, don't know anything about it because all they took was world, like um, European history. And now it's like, I feel like it's kind of the same thing because it's like the kids who do need their minds opened, I guess. Don't well, take it. Yeah, don't take those classes in the end. There's no effect in the end for the people that we actually want the class to apply. So then we start looking at, you know, there are other complications of certification, teacher certification, and, you know, if you put in a required course, you know, that all um, 1,000 students in ninth grade, you know, are going to take, then you're going to have a number of instructors to do that, you know, and so where does it reside? Does it reside in social studies? Does it reside in English? You know, what kind of certification do you need? Um, we, that's where, you know, Matt, so we look at comparable classes, you know, other, other schools that have classes like this, how have they gotten around that, you know, what are the, what are sort of the implications to that. Uh, but then you start looking at the, the curriculum, you know, where is the, where else could the curriculum fit where we have it now. Well, that's Say, and uh, content, you know, work fits, yeah. and that's where you know it evolves into something else. But these are all the routes you explore as you look into adding things into the curriculum. I mean, Is there some options to get a little creative about this approach a little bit? Um, so one one thing that I'm thinking is I'm thinking more college than high school right now. But is there an option for this to be a, a self study? I'm just throwing out a couple ways that we can get some of this done. Can there be a self-study where there's a teacher that people are checking in with about it? Like something that they're reading and they're writing these things and they can also be a credit for it, but it's not a stationary class. Or maybe it's, they get together. So I'm just trying to be creative about the ways that we can do this. Yes, is it going to be more beneficial to me on a weekly? And it doesn't have to be just one teacher is the other thing. Can it be a different teacher each semester? trimester, sorry, about how we do this because um, I understand the, the, the elective piece and I see how, I mean, I, I went to high school here too, I took China and Japan, that doesn't even exist anymore, I don't think. But I'm just saying, like it was a class, it was an elective that I could still get social studies credit for, um, where I was able to explore and kind of learn more about that. So I'm just trying to figure out, can we get creative with self-study, can we get creative about other ways that we can get some of this done? Um, yeah, sure, or does it does it involve does it involve an advisory time, you know, curriculum right. rather than a classroom curriculum? Uh, those are all things. What do you that, mean when you say curriculum? What are you thinking? Well, the curriculum is a set of concepts that you know, and a plan of study that you're going to, you know, uh, achieve and goals that you're going to achieve over the course of any kind of a organized classroom. So, 
you know, you map out what is it you're going to learn and how are you going to learn it, and that way you, when you map that out, you get a curriculum. So that's what we'd be looking at. I honestly think that's that would be part of our challenge. That's just part of our work, right? And so if you guys say this is the this is the task or this is the uh, piece you want us to look at, then I think that's our team's job to go back and look at Latasha has all those options and say, hey, where does this fit? What are some creative options to do this? So if we have a you know a charge to say it is a class or it's a required experience or you know whatever is on the table I mean I think those are the things we could spend time working on on our side to present back to you guys and say hey these are some things we could do to accomplish that that goal um, even that scenario you know those are the things we'd account for with staff time you know what kind of staff time is it going to take but I honestly think that's you know that's just our responsibility to look at that for you guys and give you all the information so you can make a decision but so I think the piece that would be helpful from us is just knowing you know What's the, what are we going after? What would you like us to achieve? And we'll definitely come back and present some options for that. So what? I don't know if we know yet, really, do we? It's kind of exploratory. I'm looking for self-study. I'm looking for what this looks like in the life that I want to look at this as what it looks like for a graduation requirement. I mean, just looking at those different ways of how yeah. we can do this, the costs associated with it. And I need to. specialization, okay. which department would it fit in? And then to, to get to that, I need to know what the it is. You know, mm -hmm. exactly what is, you know, what are the, and I, I'm not saying that they don't exist and they haven't been talked about, but I mean, we've heard everything from, you know, current events, you know, discussion, you know, to sensitivity training, to whatever. And let's, so we define very clearly what it is that we're missing, and then we look at what's the best way to teach it, what's the best way to get it across. So I think that the easiest thing nationally is that a lot of school systems and school districts are specifically looking at ethnic studies classes so that they're able to wrap in current events into that actual discussion. And actually it has a lot of science proven around attendance and actually if we're going to talk about climate survey has actually been able to help address some of those issues. So I think that's one place that you can start to look at it. Um, lots of different colleges specifically have cultural diversity requirements uh, classes. So I think we have multiple opportunities to narrow this down and come up with something that will be suitable for our students. So I just don't want it to seem like it's not out there and it's not possible. You all can clarify if I'm way off left. No, 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 you're all um, no, you're good. But I, I, I think that it's, it's being done. It's being done and there's been amazing results. I've been kind of going on this tangent about this class for a couple of years now, and I think I think it's possible and we can get it done. And if you know if they have a culture diversity day at one school, you know, and now we're going into a third high school, so these problems are going to just travel. They're not going to go away. I mean, that's obvious. So I think that we should be looking at this about entire impact on our entire district. And maybe this is a continuation of something that is included in all of our social studies from, I don't know, first grade or whatever, that we continue to build on this instead of making this a one shot. You got your immunity, and now you're good to go versus seeing that this is a complicated human issue that gets sealed in our brains at age three. And so I think that there's some opportunities here when we're talking about implicit bias that even our students have about how do we connect this along the way so that by the time we're getting to our junior highs and high schools, that we're having less of these problems, that we're having more complex and um, uh, eloquent discussions about difficult topics in ways that are not going to be disrespectful to our other students. And that our staff be able to learn that same cultural responsiveness about how they talk to our students and that we can minimize the negative impact that um, this has on our students, whether it's implicit bias or just outright discrimination. So I mean, and that goes across staff too. So I think it's possible. I just think it's about getting, it, getting down to it and getting those details back. Um, yeah, I agree with Latasha, and also going back to like what you said about the curriculum, like in one class I have, we were learning something super like relevant. We were learning actually about like something political, something Donald Trump, and it like students were engaged and we were super like into it. And this is something we wanted to learn. And then the teacher was like, "We can't talk about this anymore because I have curriculum things I have to follow," you know. And we don't want a class like that. And we've been doing some digging, and so there's like um, ethnics. There's an ethnic department, of ethnic studies at UC Berkeley, and there's this high school in Los Angeles. Um, this district that has like an, a course description and they do it um, 9th through 12th grade and we found one in Seattle and one in Washington DC as well and so like you said it's possible and they have different units where one is like an identity unit one is like different races like sexuality and so and they had they go in like we have like the links and stuff and they go into like 
how you do it and what, like even, they have like a current events unit too where, not unit, but like if something big were to happen throughout, like they're learning about something, like they'd stop for a minute or whatever and just talk about this because this is happening right now, this is affecting our lives as we like are living in it right now. And so, um, kind of like Latasha said, it can definitely be done. It's been done in different places um, and it's a requirement and you can take it from 9th through 12th here. And, you know, yeah, and um, the, okay, the best thing about it is it doesn't go in chronological order. And so let's just say if you were, because um, they just broke it up into um, identity units, African American unit, American Indian, Latin America, and Asian American. So if you were in the African American unit, you wouldn't have to start all the way from like when the first African American settled here. You would like <coughs> to say like something like the Black Lives Matter or protest happened. So then right. you would like um, connect it to why is it happening, uh, why is po police brutality a thing, and if you were to talk about um, incarceration, and then you would go all the way back to like slavery. So you wouldn't have to like go in chronological order, but then you would just connect it. And these things people. aren't like, they're just not like, we learn about them, but they're not built into like our curriculums, like to dig deep enough, you know, you learn that. Slavery happened, you learn, you have like a short, like not a short, but you learn about MLK, but you don't learn really deep into it. We never learned about like, we didn't go deep into African American or I mean American Indian history in our, we learned about it like a little bit in eighth grade and ninth grade in American studies, but we don't go into it now when we want to go into it, you know, when we learn about the North Dakota pipeline. And so I feel like this would answer a lot of students' curiosities and like we genuinely are, we want to learn about this, you know, and it wouldn't be a class where, um, you have to stay on topic about one thing, where right? you have to talk about, like, this is the curriculum, we have to follow this, but I have no choice because I have to, this is the district's plan or whatever. Like, if this happened, if something were to come up, like, you know, to put a pipeline, police brutality, anything like that, we could talk about it. We can have discussions about it, you know what I'm saying? And uh, I don't know if you guys want me to read that short little um, paragraph about it. Um, the major purpose of this course is to educate students to be politically, socially, and economically conscious about their personal connections to local and national history. Ethnic studies focuses on themes of social justice, social responsibilities, and social change. The course spans from past to present, from present and other so societies, including their own. This, co this course will focus on the experiences of African Americans, Asian Americans, Latino Americans, and American Indians. This course will also include an identity section where students will consider concepts related to their own personal, group, or nationality identity. And um, I think like this will honestly prepare us for the real world. You know, like everything we're <coughs> learning, it prepares us for college and it prepares us for like, I don't know, math and science and English, but this will prepare us on how to function as members of society. You know, how to how to connect with other people, how to have live with other people, you know, other outside of school where you're forced to be with them, how to have connections with them. I feel like this is, I don't know, more like it's incredibly mm -hmm. important. Yeah. And, and I think what we're trying to say is this isn't just a class that we want people to take just to take. It has a lot of portable yeah. skills and it would benefit anyone who took it. Yeah, and I think what separates it from like a, a regular history course is the connection to history, from history to what's happening now. And that's the part that meant that we miss that keeps causing this cycle to repeat itself is, what, is the fact that people don't understand how what happened before affects us now and what happens now affects us now. So for that, I do think that it would be very beneficial for people to take it. And not just because it's a class and it's required, but also because it's, it, you get a lot of skills out there. Just speaking, even beyond the diversity aspect of it, I think this class could be something that handles other problems. But in this age of technology where information comes at the touch of a button, it could handle the fake news epidemic. We can learn how to fact check things or process information that could be coming our way, and it would just be extremely beneficial. I think shifting back to logistics, um, there is, it's important to note that like, we may have some flexibility between 8th grade and 9th grade year, because I know that, I'm not sure if it was that best, but for us, 8th um, grade we had American studies, and then ninth grade again we had um, a U.S. history requirement, which for me I didn't feel like yeah, it was very history. meaningful, because we kind of just took two years of American history, which had been something that we'd kind of been studying since kindergarten, and yeah. so it was just, so if there was um, a place we're looking for a possible um, required course, I think that that would be an interesting spot for um, like between a big shift and Another thing is, yeah, we learn education. Yeah, like we have help in eighth grade and then we have help again in ninth grade. <coughs> and it's literally learning the same stuff we've been learning since fourth grade. 
And so, I mean, I don't know what kind of what he said. That would be a part where you can like yeah. edit and work out like that. Or, like in eighth grade, learn more factual content, and then ninth grade is how it applies to us. Mm -hmm. yeah. How can we use this? Yeah. yeah. Well, and to that health piece, um, you know, this, this hasn't been information to share with you, and um, I'm not necessarily sure I can share it, but. Um, the school counselors have been doing a considerable amount of work as far as how they can incorporate a um, variety of different curriculum as well. And so we've had a couple of conversations that happened. It started with the Ed Camp that um, Matt kind of led around how we can tie in some of the social conversations that we're having now, for social justice issues into the health curriculum. Um, obviously, there's a ton of things as far as um, LGBTQ. I mean, there's, there's a lot of things that I think that, frankly, from the curriculum, um, the school counselors said that they were missing, that they thought needed to be incorporated, um, not only um, um, in the secondary, but also the elementary as well. Um, to your point about, you know, it is somewhat consistent. So what are things that they can change and enhance with the curriculum that I think would um, uh, make it a better class for students that are participating overall? So there's, there's a couple of things that are happening, not only from a student perspective, but also from a teacher perspective as well. The class, um, again, if we sort of go through a process and develop some kind of proposal, I mean, how far out are we before this is a class? Well, if, again, like Greg said, if it's, a, if it's an elective, much quicker that we can incorporate something. If it's a required experience you want everybody to do, I mean, we're realistically talking about you probably wouldn't approve that until next fall, in the middle when you approve that, approve that program of studies, which means it wouldn't take effect for those students until the following academic year. Why? Why does it take so long? I mean, sure. Why can't we, I'm right now we're registered. We're already registered for classes for next year. So if you were to put a, a required class in for next year, uh, it would cause us to re-register every single student, you know, differently. They'd have to choose all different courses because this would take the place of something, or it would push something out of the way. So it's not a process that can happen overnight. Uh, to have a required class that hasn't been developed yet to all of a sudden, you know, do we schedule students and they're not, not the least of which we have to get teachers to teach it. And we have to know what the curriculum is in order to get the teachers to teach it. We can get you a curriculum by next week if you want. But like we also, we also, we we also have to go through the process. I know you said some of the, like some of the content in the, the courses. I know that um, it may not be the most. I mean, that, like, I don't think we need to focus on the technicalities because I feel like this is a class that would, like I said, teach us how to be functioning members it's of society. It's not saying that we shouldn't do it. It's going to take no. the time. And yeah. It's, like yeah, it's, um, and, and that's fair. I, I, I appreciate your uh, uh, passion and, and wanting it. We're a super tanker. Tank. Like a big ship at sea. You throw the wheel, it's like, I want to turn right. We're turning right. It takes a long time before that thing starts to bring the bottom yes. around. So it's... Uh, uh, don't don't get the fact that it's going to take some time. That there's any lack of of uh, passion on our side. Right. Uh, it's just unfortunately there's a process. The process takes a time. Uh, right now we're kind of in the middle of middle of the or the process has already started for the for the next year. Or so uh, it is it, 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 unfortunately it is what it is, and, and it's going to take some time. But but please don't think that we're delaying you or putting you off. But I know that's frustrating, right? And I think that's why those other pieces you guys are talking about are important about, okay, how do we not lose the conversation while we wait on this huge organization yeah. to move along, right? So there's that long-term piece we have to do, but you also did a nice job at the beginning articulating what do we do right now, okay? So what do you do in the meantime and have these conversations, workshop format, try to involve students in a less structured, less formal way Well then the long-term win is you, you for generations changed, you know, potentially what that student experience looks like as they go through school. So I think you can have the balance of while the organizational organization piece will take a long time to work out and structure something and get a formalized piece potentially, you can still do these things in the middle and, and try to engage that conversation and continuing to have that. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't get distraught or frustrated <coughs> in that part, because you can also know you're going to be working on this in the meantime, and we can keep moving those things forward as we go. And I know that's why Kingsley started where he did with you through that format, because he knows, you know, structurally what we're up against a little bit. I like to push, keep pushing, but and recognize it's going to be a journey. And anything worth doing is worth doing right. Mm -hmm. so you'd rather do it right, carefully, methodically, than do it wrong and have it fail. 
But you're thinking even an elective would probably not be something you, at this point, we could do next year. Uh, I mean, we could pilot things. Yeah. You know, that's where I would probably see, you know what? But again, the process to do this isn't you go and copy somebody else's, you know, curriculum. Uh, you decide what you, where you want to go with it, and you get, per, you know, teaching professionals in the room, you know, that are passionate about the subject. Uh, we have teachers that are passionate about the subject. And you, you make it fit what you, how you want to do it. And it's, it's not a, it, it shouldn't be a quick process, I don't think. It should be thoughtful. But that doesn't mean it can't, you know, we could pilot something sometime next year. It just would in, involve, you know, us, you know, finding the kids to do it and, and, and doing a pilot project. I think there's pieces of the content you could be piloting throughout. You know, we have advisory times. You know, if there was some kind of content or discussion that wanted to be structured through those, through the workshop times. I mean, you could be, to Dr. Schultz's point, you could be building the content as you're having these conversations for what you're going to incorporate into the class. I mean, we could do an elective and you could put it together and you could structure it every day. Would that be as effective as maybe some of these other things we could do in the interim? I'm not so sure it would, you know, and I'd rather the class be an instant success from what do we get it right away and then we do that part right and how do you structure in some other opportunities in the meantime maybe. And there are other opportunities. I and mean, we do major changes when we go from six to seven, when we go from eight to nine. And uh, I know that, and John, if you were here, I think he'd probably agree with me that we can do more when our kids enter ninth grade. You know, we can look at you know, the programming that we do at that point, you know, to establish some things. Now, you're talking about some longer team things. I keep hearing, you know, North Dakota Pipeline and, you know, Black Lives Matter, whatever. I mean, those are. We're all here with it, but if we can target, you know, what we talk about, you know, identity studies, we can talk about, you know, how do we treat one another, you know, as we enter into a large community like West High School. I think we can take some bits and pieces of that and get it going immediately. You know, I mean, we can say, when you enter as a ninth grader, you're going to have this experience where you're going to be, you're going to know, that these are pro procedures involving, you know, equity issues. These are, you know, uh, set rules that everybody's going to get. In the meantime, we can look at, you know, other experiences you can have. I mean, I spent just over the weekend, you know, two hours doing training for the University of Iowa to teach a class, you know. We can, it was, you know, there's ways to do this, this other ways, like, you know, you said, Natasha. I think we can explore those as we build the capacity to maybe have this more robust thing going on here that we're talking about. Because I am very supportive of an ethnic studies class. I mean, that, you know, what Ala read was right in my line of thinking of something that I think our city and West Liberty High School and this community, we should have that kind of experience. I'm, I do think that's a good idea, but I can't tell you that it's going to happen next year. I had another point to bring up. So the ACLU has a booklet, and I know the Saudis talked about this, on students' rights. Um, it's called Know Your Rights or something like that. I found you bring it with me today. But I found it to be really helpful. It outlines what rights students have within a school building, what they can and can't say, or what they are and are not allowed to do. And I think if we could get this ACLU booklet distributed, um, within every school building, maybe put it in libraries or classrooms or hand it out even, I think that would be really helpful. So what you always talk about is multiple things to get to the mountaintop, yeah. basically. So I think what we need to do is find a visual way to be able to show these uh, short bursts of interventions with long-term systemic changes, what you're looking for. and so. I think these opportunities for self-study and or, or um, using advisory time to have meaningful discussion type things, I think those are like those immediate things, the, the piloting of the program, turning into an elective that could potentially turn into a requirement um, or make this class so engaging that everybody wants to take it anyway. I think those are things that you all are talking about systemic change and that's, that's kind of what Phil was trying, trying to get at with the boat analogy. Um, and so I, I think what you all have started, I, I, wanna, I want to uh, make sure that you know that we appreciate the wave 
you know, because sometimes you need a wave of change to come through to make people start looking and thinking about things differently. And so, but uh, we'll keep biting off this really, really big burger <laughs> um, as much as we can. And so I think with starting with these small things and working towards those big things, I think will be really, um, really helpful. But some of you all are graduating, right? So, but we don't want this energy to go. So my, my request to you personally is, who do you reach for behind you to make sure they keep the same energy? Because when you all doing your studies and you bog down and you can't remember where you put your phone, because <laughs> it's that rough, we need some other people that's still gonna come and keep keep this this group going. And so um, that both are important about systemic changes, succession planning, about who's next behind you all. Some of you all are still young, but who else is coming behind you that can still take the same energy so we can get that over time? Part of that, you know, would be helpful to have a, 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 the established club with, te you know, with support and funding. In fact, it would be going back to funding hey, to make sure that there is something that we have younger, you know, younger students, you know, that are involved in carrying the torch forward. You don't get to stay here forever. whether it will be required or an elective or maybe, uh, you know, self-study. This will be at Liberty, too, right? We're thinking it will be at Liberty as well. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think it's looking at our secondary education, so yeah. that would be across all of our Okay. Right? Am I crazy? Yeah, no, I think okay. the option we would bring forward and work with you guys on, we would, mm -hmm. you know, consider that as something all of our secondary students would need to participate okay. in. Good question. So when do you think we can have the next conversation? About the class specifically? Well, I took away three things. Funding, assembly, class, slash curriculum. <laughs> Just in case it's, it could be class, could be curriculum. Uh, you guys gotta help me say things. Uh, but you know, I know it's not tomorrow, but. Sure. Is it? I mean, I think we can be, back to you after spring break with a pretty good framework of what a class could look like and some potential alternatives. You so know, maybe like April, early April? Yeah. You know, when I hear Lujan talk about the class, every time I hear Lujan talk about the class, I think, this class sounds so good, I just can't wait to take this class. Like, we should just, you know, hire you to teach the class. But uh, it sounds to me a little bit, like it reminds me a little bit of what I hear about the um, seminar class that mm -hmm. some of the kids take at junior high, you know? Uh, and I, capstone, I think is an option. All right. But yeah, I've but heard similar, now that you say that, I have heard similar things about seminar when I was in eighth grade. But not everybody takes seminar, I guess. No, so that yeah, you, so you want to, you know, the scale issue is issues still there. But, uh, you know, that, that could be sort of a way to think about, is there a way to transform that existing class? I don't know. It's something we can think about. I just feel like if we do it during junior high, it won't stick as much in people's yeah, minds. Yeah, it might get like true. During high school, yeah. everything yeah. sticks for, like, <laughs> much better, much more, much it's true. There's a lot more people too, so you'll yeah. be able to yeah. apply your skills to a larger audience. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but even the, even then, maybe the model of that type of class, you know, in a different year, uh, could be something. Sure. About. I'm pretty confident we can come up with a high level class, and I think these guys, you know, be one of the first people we look at for input once we are able to see some existing models or some existing structures we have, and say, hey, you know, what do you what do you guys 
think of this and uh, try to get some feedback from some students to see is this what we're talking about and then we could bring that forward. So I think there's a lot of good existing models and like Greg said, you know, this, this should fit right into what our community believes and supports. So. We probably need to make sure we, um, whether it's through this group or another, provide wraparound support for kids as they're going through this, because you can only talk for so long. You need some other place sometimes. If there's a, I just think about, you know, I work with a large group of, of kids, and when there's an immediate thing, the death of a, another teen or something, sometimes they talk about it in class, or sometimes, like, at the end of the school day when I'm there, it's like the, of everything, and so it would be nice if there was some option of, whether it's this group or not, where that, where it's funded, where there's a teacher that can also be willing to help having that discussion and make an open forum sometimes for kids, regardless of what grade they're in, if they want to be able to come back. Because I think that's something right now that's missing is, if something happens, who do I go to in my school? Because you know, it used to be back in the day with the, the guidance counselor, and you go in and you shed your tears and you go back and give you your pass, but now our guidance counselors don't necessarily do yeah. that anymore. And so where do we create these safe space and opportunities for our kids right now when things are happening right now. Because this stuff happened just this week. So, I mean, where do they go tomorrow? I think we need to start talking about where is that safe place to go um, that they can be able to debrief this with other students, regardless of what grade they're in, if they're in that school. Yeah, I was wondering about that too. And I was wondering what the role that guidance counselors do play. That's um, actually kind of like what you were saying, that's part of our thing, which is like devoted mental health specialists and must be readily available to, for students to talk to. And we talk about counselors, but like I said, like you said several times, counselors are like there for grades, there for schedule. And so um, if we could have, I, we heard City has a therapist. I did not You know, I've had the same, I guess I'm living in the world that you were describing where I would think that the, uh, the entry point there would be the guidance counselor, but maybe that's just not true anymore, or maybe there's, it's a misperception that it's maybe not true. Maybe it, it is, but I don't think yeah. that the kids, at least, no. <laughs> I don't think that they perceive them in the same way that we used to back uh -huh. in the day, you know. I mean, I still talk to my guidance counselor, okay? Uh -huh. I'm serious. <laughs> like, I do, I'm serious. I email her. <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, they don't have, that's not the same way that I see them interacting with their guidance counselors and that same, I'm not saying that some of them yeah. are not open to that kind of but it seems like that they think in their head, this is who I go to if I need to make a change in my schedule, not necessarily this is someone I go to for emotional support. Well, I mean, if it is, though, someone who we could go to, maybe we just need to Right, I think we need to find a way to identify somehow. them. Uh, uh, or if not, then there is sort of a gap there. Yeah. But I think there also needs to be a dichotomy there, because me personally, I would feel very uncomfortable knowing that I had just like poured my heart out to the same person that will help me get a scholarship. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you need to separate. But that could be helpful too, let me tell you. Yeah. <laughs> you need this I mean, I would just interject that there are plenty of tears shed in the guidance counseling office, I'm sorry to say, you know. Um, I mean, they. Some students identify that as the place to go, and they certainly do get a lot of business for personal support. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, the guidance counselor is the one the coordinating support, though, yeah. identifying with the student where where they can go. We do have two, you know, uh, family advocates. I guess is the official title that they do that you know work with kids. But these are high, we have a lot of needs, and we're only two of them. And, it doesn't well, surprise me. Well, going on to what uh, Miriam said, mm -hmm. I think that information also needs to be accessible. So I didn't even know that we had. I don't even know right. what that is. And when you're stressed out, I mean, you know, we, we definitely the the service finds you. You know, in that case, I mean, that's that's the one we have now. You know. well, I don't think I don't think we need to wait until the service finds us. I think we need to be able to go find the service. Has the has the student advisory time taken over home room? Or is there still a homeroom? Um, we don't have a structure like that. Really? It's like every other Thursday we have like, like 
I think kind of two things you talk about with student support there is like what who are the professionals that can take care of whatever that specific need is and how do we get them hooked into that mm -hmm. and then another thing we talk to our students a lot about is um, and the part we could probably do a better job on is you know trusted adults right and I th think that's something so as we have these conversations or if you get into those heavy topics it'd be important for students to know okay who are your trusted adults are you do you feel like you're connected to somebody because mm -hmm. It doesn't necessarily always go by position, right? It might be a guidance counselor, it might be an administrator, it could be a fellow teacher. That's a good entry point, but that might not be the long-term support they need connected with either. So even more so than articulating all that long-term support, I think sometimes it's like, do they know who to go to if they start to feel that way that can help them get connected to the system? Because the system's always going to be large and it's always going to be hard to access. So. I think those are some of the things we'll just have to pay attention to because you're right. You can't go to have this heavy conversation second hour and then go on sometimes and pretend like your day is just fine afterwards, right? I mean, there's going to be some big things that are potentially uncovered and discussed and uh, dealt with here. So those things we'll have to be very intentional about making sure we know how to get kids connected and our staff are familiar with those processes so they can help facilitate that. I feel like the problem is that um, it doesn't need to be required to access. I mean, I was, I was doing a... Um, an article for a newspaper on sexual assault, and then that's when I learned that we had like a, a health specialist who helps with that. But uh, I didn't know that we had someone there as like an emotional counselor, as I would say. Um, so I just think if we just had a professional in the building, just knowing that there's someone there that we could talk to. I mean, I had it in elementary school and the junior high I went to and down south in Georgia, but like when I got here, like I expected since we're like high school students and we have like like really crazy and like emotional drama and everything. I just thought that we would have someone there. So it's just like surprising that we don't and I think we should put it on as soon as possible. More of a stationary person that can connect you to the resource that you're in. Maybe there should be more awareness like we know there's a nurse in the school. Yeah. This is my first time I've ever been there. Yeah, someone from city who used to come to like She's busy too. She told us you guys have a therapist and nobody knows about them, but they have like a tiny room somewhere in your building. Nancy? I've never heard of Nancy. We just need to work on information and distribute it out to students. Well, that's where I was going on the uh, home room and the advisory time. Uh, maybe <coughs> we should be trying to disseminate the information at that time because that's when you have smaller groups, especially if you know you were still talking about the complaint process and maybe some students not knowing exactly how to access it in a smaller group, it's easier to kind of answer those questions and let everybody know how to do that. Just I think that would be a good idea as well. Should we have like a short-term building that we can have like a um, when I was at Southeast last year, we had enrichments or like advisory enrichments for that little hawk time. And there were things like book clubs, there were coding class that you could opt to take. And I think if we wanted to get that diversity class out soon, we could do that in the short term. We can have that uh, enchantment or enrichment for advisory and then build off of it. That's exactly what I was thinking, Mary. And I think there'd be some opportunities for us there to do something quickly, you know, have some people help us facilitate those conversations, access that time, so. And that's what I think we did when like, she said that it wasn't something that had to wait necessarily. And maybe, like, to differ from the <coughs> we had a similar thing in the class last year. Um, uh, instead of, like, for the coding and for, what was the other example? Book club. Book club. Um, instead of it being like an optional, if you want to learn how to code or whatever, you know, that you decide to go, maybe we could do like a class or two go every day. So it's just like that's what your whole class that you're in for the period will go do. Instead of just like the kids who want to. Because like how you were saying, um, the Jane before, how like, the kids who want to take it are often the kids who don't need it quite as much. So it wouldn't be like you would you wouldn't be staying in the same class during advisory. You'd go to somewhere else for the class. Oh, I suppose we're the teacher. Because I think person not, could you know, come there. We we talked about this earlier about how not all classes, you know, yeah, you know, to yeah, have these types yeah, of like, conversations in I, a safe environment. Yeah, like I'll feel that you know my English class, you know, is way more open to this discussion than, you know, my chemistry class.
work for you? Was this yeah. good? It Work, worked for us, I think, yeah, looking around, but everybody feel good about I thought uh, your preparation, and, uh, that was outstanding, so thank you. We, we receive a lot of, as board members, we receive a lot of feedback <coughs> from members of our community, and I just want to compliment everybody who has uh, emailed the board. Uh, I'll tell you, if you guys are the future, are uh, Y'all communicate your points a lot better than some of the people uh -huh. in, this, in this community. So really appreciate the positive ideas and thinking outside the box and cooperative nature of having a discussion rather than just shouting at us. <laughs> <laughs> All right, for the board members, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Yeah. Yeah, but just before we do that then, um, I think we'll target April. Would you like to do the same format? Uh, April. Because well, they have to... Um, they don't have to bring this back. If you do, we'll have some yeah. 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 But I'm pretty yeah. sure they'll check in with you all before they right. check in with all of us. Yeah, yeah, we should. Right. Exactly. Yes. The next connection should really be there. Well, in the meantime, what are some things that we can be pondering in this I think that City and West should have a meeting so that we can get sort of on the same footing yeah. before April. Yeah. So everybody's on the group chat, right? Yeah, I want to talk to you guys. So, yeah, um, permission to do the workshop? Like, do we have. To I think Kingsley and I work with you guys building principles and work with you guys about how to do those workshops and where to go that way. So I think we have pretty clear direction that we need to pursue those interim opportunities while we build this class. So I think that's where Director Deloach was saying we'll be in touch with you guys to make sure we're keeping that conversation moving forward while we're building the long term class. So. That's why we should have a greater collaboration. Yeah. So I think we should definitely go and sit for this class. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Do you guys have all of each other's contact information? Yep. I have the other things, but that is. Is there a big one? I have to do the chat. Do you have a big one? 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 Do you have a big one